Come on in, y'all. We're starting a little late, 15 minutes after. Unfortunately, we're going to make it a short show. Elder Rodney Jones is stuck in traffic, so he will not be here. We got a whole lot of new stuff happening and new setups, new mics. We got cameras and all kind of stuff. So bear with the the new setup as we try and make it a better year for those of you who are out there in radio and TV land and YouTube land and Facebook land and land of the giants. I don't know. Just land folks. Y'all are land lovers. Okay. Uh, they're getting ready to cue me in. I'm hoping that, uh, mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. So the, so the Jones show. I am he. It is a Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Theology Thursday. It is the time that we sit around the mic and talk about the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Man, that is the book for me. I'm so excited to be here in another new year. Happy to the new year to y'all and your loved ones out there. Those of y'all in Facebook land, YouTube land, those of you guys who are in uh, Twitter land, uh, and uh, all those other people uh, that, that's in the superhighway. Uh, God told them to go out into the highways and byways and compel them the new highway is social media. So highway. Uh, we got a Sunday school lesson here that we're going to tr try and talk about for the next few minutes. Not too long. Again, Elder Rodney Jones is not here. Uh, he's stuck in traffic, so he it just did, didn't matter. Uh, uh, it didn't make any sense for him to come all the way this way because by the time he got here, the show will be wrapping up. We're in Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, and uh, it's called A Sincere Faith. A sincere faith. And here's the Bible truth. Daniel's act of faith and his tact helped him to remain obedient to God with his dietary requirements. Dietary requirements. One thing that I have discovered in history, I'm a history buff. I love it. I teach it. I show it to my children. And we are making history as we wake up every day. That dash in between the time that you was born and the time that you will die. The time you was born is kind of important. The time that you die is kind of important, but that dash is the most important part of your life because that is uh, what people will find out about you, and that is what God will determine uh, what to do with you at judgment. Uh, Brony Scott, how you doing? So don't scare me like that. I'm sorry, Brony Scott. Uh, Brony is one of our great teachers of the Word. Um, but what I've discovered in this particular lesson are a few things, even though it's talking about the faith of Daniel, a sincere faith, which hopefully you guys can apply that to your lives. I've discovered that there are some things that are happening in history here that has happened even in not just antiquity, but in world history. As it pertains to war, world wars and who have the right, uh, the naming rights. When someone is overtaken and a, a war happens and um, I got stuff in my mouth. I was eating, sorry. Um, and whoever wins the war has the right to write the history. Yes. That's why you look at the history books and you say, some ain't right about this. Your forefathers, your grandparents say, mm -mm, that history book that you're reading in class right now, something is not right about it because I know I was living during that time and that didn't happen. Or that happened, but not like that. It's because whoever wins the war writes the history. And you will begin to see that in this particular chapter of the book of Daniel. Hello, my brother. Amen. Uh, Phil Asai. Help me out, Doc, because we got a real Hebrew watching on this show here. Uh, the this is the deportation of Daniel to Babylon. All right, we got the we got the major prophets, and we got the minor prophets. They were not minor because they just was insignificant to God. No, they were just minor because they didn't have a whole lot of say. They didn't, they didn't do a whole lot like the major prophets said, but they just as significant as the major prophets. I don't even like calling them major and minor. All right, because uh, we major and minor in a whole bunch of uh, stuff in our churches. But in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim is uh, was the king of Judah. Um, and if you notice in the dispensation, not dispensation, but the genealogy of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Matthew chapter 1, you will also see that person's name pop up. Uh, verse uh, Chapter 1, verse 11, Je uh, Jeconiah might be an interpretation uh, of his name as well. He's got, a, he's got a few names here. 
Uh, also, Konai, uh, Konai, I think it was, was another name. And then, of course, uh, Jehoiakim, okay? And you got to go to Jeremiah chapter 22 and 30 and see an unusual thing that happens with this king. And why, how is it that Jesus Christ becomes a king and a priest? Uh, that's another show and another type of fighting that we can do later. But Jehoiakim was the king of Judah. Uh, and came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and they besieged it, took it over. And this is another way of God teaching the Jews a lesson. He told them, if you do this, I will do this for you. you if you do these great things, I'll do these great things. If you do these lesser things, these, these deplorable things, I'm going to do the same thing. All right? I'm going to curse you. And so the Jews keep falling into uh, this type of besiegement from other nations around the world. And the Lord came, uh, the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, Lord G, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. I'm giving you a history of the lesson so that when you get to verse 8, you won't be so confused on why these strange names are popping up other than Daniel, three other names pop up that seem to be strange to you, but you know who they are. Verse 3 says, And the king spake unto Ashnath, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes. And these men were chosen. Okay, Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongues of the Chaldeans. All right. There are some great people out there in this kingdom of God. I'm talking about you who are a part of the Christianity. People think that you're dumb. You're crazy. You're weird, you're strange, you're drunk because you speak in some tongue and you, you say certain things, and colloquial speakings and what have you. The world think you're crazy. But God has used the, the, uh, the preaching of the gospel to confound the wise. And they think y'all ridiculous, but boy, if they only knew what we knew. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Okay, that's M-E-A-T, y'all. That's the food, okay? And of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now unto them, uh, these were of the children of Judah. These were the children of Judah. Understand, Jacob blessed his children in the book uh, of Genesis. Towards the end, uh, it was Reuben lost. He lost out because he was nasty. He slept with his father's uh, con or wife or concubine or whatever, and he lost out on the birthright. And then there was Simeon and Levi who uh, saw or uh, who witnessed, not they didn't witness, but their sister Dinah was overtaken by this dude, okay? Uh, she was raped. And so those two went and had so many of the men killed in the territory by having them circumcised and why they was weak. So those two lost out. But then Judah, when, when Jacob blessed Judah, he began to call him something unique. And we, pretty much we see Judah through history. Send Judah first, okay? We see the, the, the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, which uh, we worship. We thank God for Jesus coming through that line. So these men come through the line of Judah, all right? Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, all right? So unto them, the prince of the eunuchs gave names. He changed their names like God changed the names of, of uh, Jacob. Called him Israel because he wrestled uh, with an angel. He changed the name of, uh, of Abram to Abraham. He changed the name of Sarah to Sarah. And many of you think that he changed the name of Paul, but he did not. Paul had two citizenships, so he didn't change his name. He just called him uh, one name depending on where he was. So his name was Saul and his name was Paul. The, all right, I hope that helps some of you out. And so, uh, unto them the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah of Shadrach. All right, Hananiah was a popular name in, in uh, antiquity. And to Mishael of Meshach, 
and to Azariah of Abed Nego. So that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Negro. Yeah, yeah, y'all know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, verse 8 says here, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. How many of y'all out there, either you or your children, have decided to separate themselves from worldly things, worldly lust, uh, worldly persuasions, whether it's uh, cl clubbing, or whether it's strong drink, or, or, or whether it's some type of lifestyle, whether it's some type of dance, okay, or a pole dance, okay? How, how many of y'all who have people, have children in your lives, or yourself decided that I'm not, I, I will fraternize with the world, meaning I won't be, I, I, I know that I need to be uh, associated with the world because I go to, to, to a job, I pay bills, I I go to the marketplace. I go to the bank. So you got associated with the world, but you can be in the world, but not of the world. How many of us have decided to separate ourselves from the world, won't eat of the world's meats or be overtaken by the world's system? Well, that was Daniel. He decided to dedicate his life totally to the Lord and not be persuaded, even in the dietary things. Because you got to understand, these are Hebrews, and if you read the book of Leviticus, you'll see that there are some things that we're doing now that the Hebrews were not allowed to do, especially how we eat. The catfish is good. Oh, love me some catfish. But that is a bottom dweller. That is the garbage man of the sea, and it eats pretty much everything at the bottom, uh, the scavenger, and we eat it. Look at the pig. The pig eats so much stuff, it, it digests this stuff over a couple hours, and it's done. And, and uh, it, is, it is one of the most nastiest uh, animals in the kingdom, but yet we love ourselves some pork. Okay, I don't, but many of you do. But when you look in the book of Leviticus and you look at the dietary laws, uh, 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 we preach and we practice, uh, um, we try to practice some of the Old Testament things. But what we've do, done is we've taken some laws and threw out some laws. We practice some laws and throw out some laws. Even I don't care what it is. I'm not going to go into this whole tithing thing. Uh, but we will take some laws, okay, and we'll say, we'll push that on the people, but these laws, we won't. We'll say, no, God, Jesus died on the cross, and he has erased that. You see what we've done? The, Jesus, or not Jesus, but God says if you if you break one law, you broke them all. So there's this, this, this that misfit, and there's that 613 laws, and there's the sacrificial laws, the dietary laws, and, and uh, those the blood sacrifices and things like that, and we'll take one here, one there, and throw the rest out, okay? Uh, Y'all are uh, bipolar in the word. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to eat some pork right now. And the brony say, <laughs> go ahead, do your pork, girl. And so we have to go to the book of Romans, and of course, and then that's where we get uh, we get the fight with the, the Hebrews today. Even the Hebrew Israelites, we get to fight with them because some of us do some practices where Jesus said it's okay to do some things. Uh, the Apostle Paul said it's okay to do some things, and we pray over our food and what have you. And that becomes a fight, but that's not this show. Um, let's see. So verse 8 said, but, but um, verse 9 says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs tender love and favor. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my, uh, my lord the king who has appointed your meat and your drink for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort then shall ye make me endanger my head to the kings. Uh, don't do this, uh, he's saying here. And, and then said Daniel to uh, Melzar, Melzar means the steward, uh, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and then water to drink. Pulse is vegetables. Give us the vegetables and give us the water uh, to, uh, to eat and drink. Then let our continents be looked upon before thee, and the continents of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. If you see fit then, 
Take a look at us. Watch us. You should be telling people all the time, hey, don't judge me by uh, the things that I might say. Judge me by the things that I do indeed. We do lip service all the time. Oh, I tell you, we do this a lot for each other. Friends, we do this to God. God, if you do this for me, I'll do this. God, if you get me out of this mess, I'm going to do this. And, and you should be saying, God, watch me. Just just uh, take a watch. Take a look at me. Mm -hmm. Watch me. Better keep your eyes on me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so it says, so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And some of y'all says, I'm becoming a vegetarian just because of this story right here. And you look at those who are vegetarians and say, how you fat? How you still obese and all you do is eat vegetables? How is that possible? Look at the animal kingdom. Look at the ones, not the, look at the hoverboards uh, opposed uh, to the meat eaters, the, the carnivorous, okay? Look at the, the, the vegetable eaters, all right? Look at them, how big they are. Look at the dinosaurs of, of, of old. Look at the, uh, uh, the cows who, who cud, they eat the cud, the grass. They're not meat eaters, but how can they be so fat? Uh, uh, and how was it possible that an elephant could be as fat as he is? And things like, look at the, the rhinoceros and um, things like that. Okay, how are these, how can they be, and they just eat vegetables? There should, there should be something there for y'all. Here it is in this lesson. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them the pulse, gave them the vegetables that he asked for, Okay. All right, yeah. Um, then it says here, now here's the reputation of Daniel in, in Babylon. Here's this amazing reputation that all of you who are watching should have, this reputation. As for these four children, oh man, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Wow. Because of an obedient, he says, I'm not going to feel like I'm entitled to the world's devices, the things that the world offer me. I should be offering the world something. So what we have done was we, we have allowed the world to dictate to us what we should do and say and our conduct and eat. Instead of us saying, I'm leaning on the Lord, and he's going to dictate through me what the world is. See, we're passengers, not passengers, we, we are, we're nomads, okay? We're just, we're just strangers. We're just, we're, just uh, we're ambassadors, pretty much. We were sent here on the earth, and we're just passing through, okay? This world is not our home. We sing these songs, and we quote these scriptures all the time, but do you really believe it? So... God says, uh, make sure you, you, you witness to the people out there, even to the poor. If you give to the poor, he says, you even lending to me. There is a bank of, uh, account that we have with God. It's a bank account, and God every morning wakes up and says, can I get a loan? Can I get a loan? Okay, and so he's pulling for, from our financial institution every morning. Can I get a loan? All right. Okay. No problem. So what we have to do is go out there and take care of the needy and the poor. And then God says, I got to repay you. I got to repay you. All right. Because we are supposed to be leaders. We are supposed to be the ones who are providing services to the world. We're supposed to be the ones who are uh, giving or uh, lending to the world. But it's the other way around. Daniel uh, says, oh, no. These three boys says, oh, no. No, we're going to totally lean on God for even our dietary habits. And then I want you to watch us for 10 days and see what happens. And then what happens, see what God gave them, knowledge and skill. That's what could happen to you if you just pay attention. We're leaning on the, the world for even our schooling, our universities, these universities that the world has set up, these colleges that the world has set up and things like this system. And God has given us the wisdom to set up these schools. But we don't do it. God has given us the ability and the knowledge to set up financial institutions. We don't do it. He gave us the ability to set up uh, businesses and things like that. We don't do it. Okay? There's only a few of us who do do it. There's only a few Christian businesses out there, or if you're Hebrews, depending on who you are, those who follow the Lord, there's only a few out there. There's not too many here in Chicago. 
I don't know. I, I don't understand that. But yet we're in church every Sunday, uh, speaking and slobbing and falling out and collecting offerings and what have you. But we're not. We're not the ones who, where the world come to us. They're supposed to come to us for help. And, 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 and substance, okay? I look at my, my dear brother here, Tyrone Gaston. He's a pastor, but he ha he and his wife have this beautiful restaurant, all right, where he, uh, he's a pastor, but you look at him, you talk to him, you think uh, he just one of them old, old, old country bumpkin uh, uh, Christian folks who don't know much. Please talk to that man. And look at his business. They've been they've been in business for I don't even know how long. Uh, Tyron Gaston, long minty a minty of years. They have been feeding people. They don't just feed Christians. They feed everybody who walk up in there. And people have left there. And says Wow, there's something different about that proprietor. There's something different because that's the way we're supposed to be. Oh uh, man. Okay. Yeah, I know Kendrick. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to preach it. All right. So. So God gave them wisdom. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all remember old Nebi, right? Nebi, Nebi, old Nebuchadnezzar. The brother stood on the balcony and says, look what I done done. I am a, I'm the greatest. I am the greatest. I'm king of the world. Okay, and he just uh, looked out there and said, I created all of this stuff here. And God said, you did. I sure did. Look at what I, the work that I've done. And God says, I'm about to show you a lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had that boy on all four. He down there eating grass uh, like, a, like a cow. He just was down there. He just, and he had him down there just to humble that boy. And you got to be careful. So when you set, when you find yourself prideful and lifted up, and you said, "I created this ministry. I, I started this choir. This is my church. I'm the pastor, and my people, and my this, my that." God says, "Oh, you forgetting? You forgetting something? You 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 you, you forgetting something? Okay, it, right here." And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel. How many people in the world can say? There ain't none like a Peronia. Ain't, ain't nobody like Lady Rochelle. Ain't nobody like Rodney Jones. Ain't, I ain't found nobody like Sherry Tudson. There is no person like Vicky. None like Phil. There is none like Kendrick and Lori. I've never seen such great faith that come out of a, a, out of a body like I have out of Janine Joe. I've never seen such faith on how they worship their God. I've never seen it like Sukina. There can't be another person like Vanessa Crabb. There is no other person that I've ever met in my life who have heard and read scripture and like the Berean church, uh, went home and studied it for themselves and was able to interpret it like Sal Butler or Barbara Taylor. There is no person like Elder Dennis Griffin who, who, who is uh, pressed by the world and knowing good and well the wiles of the devil has pressing on him and he puts on the full armor of God from the top of his head to the feet shod with the preparation of peace and he goes out there and win people to the Lord. He's different when he walks into the office. Everybody look at him differently than they do everybody else. How is that possible? That's what happened to, in this story, Daniel decided to go out there on faith. He says, oh, no, and he took them three boys with him, the ones with the three funny names, okay, and says, no, here's what we're going to do, and y'all watch us. Uh-huh. Don't believe me, just watch, okay? That's what you should be saying when y'all leave the house, when you're going out there in the world, when you're at Walmart. When you when you at Walgreens and all them other walls, okay? When you out there in the street and in the bank, City Bank and and City Corp and uh, Chase Manhattan, you should be you should be saying, "Don't believe me, just watch," okay? And as they're watching you on your job, they said, "You know what he said? She said, don't believe you don't believe it. Just keep your eye on me and watch the change that happens when you totally give yourself to the Lord and His commandments. It's different." It feels good to be empowered when you're out in the world, and the world, in all of his wisdom, so-called, the wisdom of the world, they look at you and say, yeah, I need some help. I've had, I've had CEOs, I've had millionaires who would ring my phone and, and come to my house and say, I need help. I need counseling. Can you help me? And I say, I don't have a Ph.D., 
I, I don't have all this kind of money. I don't. And they says, no, you don't understand. You know something. See, this wisdom that God has given you levels the playing field. It levels it because people begin to see something in you that they, they don't know why they are attracted to you. They have no idea. Why is it that I'm attracted to Barbara Taylor the way I am in business? Why was that possible? I hired her. I signed her paycheck, but there's something about her that I need her to stay here because when she walks in the office, things just happen positive for us. There is this sense of peace and tranquility when Barbara's in the room. The world's supposed to recognize that in you, and whenever you speak, you have this, you, your words are laced with kindness, okay? And, and even with your enemies, a coals, a hot porn coals is poured on their heads because of your response to the evil that comes your way. This is Daniel and these three boys in this lesson. It is one of the greatest lessons that we all should take a heed to. I didn't study the lesson before I got here. I was expecting Elder Rodney Jones to teach it. And trust me, if he was here right now, he would take you into a place that you just didn't think uh, you could go. Elder Jones probably, I think, one of the greatest teachers on this side of heaven. Elder Rodney Jones is the one that actually taught me how to study the scriptures. And that's my blood brother. I know we call each other brothers, all that everybody do, but that's actually my blood brother. We got the same mommy and daddy, and my brother Rodney would sit on the porch uh, all day long and study the word of God and then say, come here, uh, Walter, sit down. Let me help you understand something. Let me show, now show me this. Now what does that mean? And he would do that every day. Now show me that, okay? What do you think that's interpretation? And I says, oh my God, who is this man? Who beest thou? <laughs> That's my brother. Now, Ella Jones, I can't bring you in on this conversation because we're on the radio. And so, uh, unfortunately, they ain't going to hear it on urban broadcast media. So we're going to have to do it like an after show. All right? So I'm going to chime you in for the after show. And once, we, once we're done with urban broadcast media, I hope you heard that. Okay? That way, that way when I'm silent... Uh, of talking, urban broadcast media won't be able to hear you. All right, okay, there it is right there. Okay, to God be the glory, Bible says, amen, amen. Gotcha, okay. So, um, and the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and all, and in all matters of wisdom, all matters of wisdom, all matters of wisdom. There should be somebody in your life who you can tell anything to and they will have a word of wisdom for you. It just should be somebody. Everybody don't have it. I get that. But there should be somebody in your life, if it's not you, who people can come to with all kind of matters. And look at Jesus Christ. If the word says, let his mind be in you, which is also in Christ, and if his life supposed to be a beacon light for us to cater after, they came to Jesus for all kind of matters. He was tempted on every side. And trust trust me, he was tempted sexually too. You best believe that. Because I'm going to tell you all this and be honest with you, if some woman poured some oil on my feet and then dried it with her hair, I'm sorry, that is a, a sexual attempt. That is some kind of sexual assault for me. I'm sorry I'm being honest with you. He was tempted. Yes, he was. But he just said, uh, you know. And so how is it that they will come to him with all these things and the man, Jesus. It doesn't have to mean that the Christ in him was, was had to do all the talking. The wisdom of this man, Jesus. See, you got to understand, he wasn't half man. You can't, you can't be half man. You can't be half pregnant either. You either all man or you ain't. All right, and so it. And I, somebody gonna say, well, what about those, uh, those, uh, them, them, them folks with the both? That's another story. Okay, so and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, that the king inquired of them, and he found them ten times better. Oh, they eat vegetables. They dedicated themselves ten days and say, don't believe me, just watch. And then the king examined them, and here was his response was, it's a slap in the face to the kingdom. It's a slap in the face to all those other people in there. Watch what the king says. It's a shame. He says, 
and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, said, come here, come here, boys. He found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Was nobody in that kingdom like Daniel and these boys. None, not even the astrologers and the magicians. Okay, and Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus, all right? Now, it kicks off about 600, 605 B.C., all right, before the Common Era, and then it goes, you know, the the, 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 lump, the numbers kind of go down, all right? They don't go up, they go down. So by the time 539 B.C., so this is about 66, a 66-year 66 span, y'all, long time, all right? Daniel continued even until the first uh, year of King Cyrus. Now, there's some, there's some wonderful uh, footnotes in this Bible here. Sometimes I don't agree with footnotes because, you know, man uh, does do some writing and interpreting, and sometimes I agree. Ella Jones and I like to do that. Sometimes we tell the people, we don't always agree with Matthew Henry. We don't always agree with Dix. We don't always agree with Jet, Jet, uh, Jet uh, Mossett, and Brown, and and all these guys. We don't we don't always agree uh, with them. Uh, most times we do, but sometimes it, it makes you wonder what what thinking were they at the time. Uh, Ryan says that this is where the mistake of calling it a Daniel fast. Ooh, I can't wait for him to come on here and talk about talk about that. Uh, those four in particular, mainly Daniel, in this lesson, did what was more important, and that was to take heed to God's law. The obedience of the law is still important. The Ark of the Covenant was carried in a cart. It was not supposed to be carried that way, and it tipped over, and a man touched it. I think his name was Ooze, and God killed the man for touching the Ark. And y'all, some of us, even I, looked at that as being an unfair act. How could God be so inconsiderate to kill a man for trying to protect the ark from falling? You know why? Because of the law. Breaking the law, no excuse. There's still no excuse. The law is the law. Uh, you run, I remember speeding and got pulled over by the cop. And I said, I'm sorry. He says, yeah, you're sorry because you got caught. But he said, there is no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse of the law. God had to kill the man, not just for the man, but he had to show the Levites, you are carrying the ark the wrong way. I told you how to carry it. Now I've got to, I've got to punish this man in front of y'all to show you that you're wrong. And they had to park that thing. He said, now we're done <laughs> with this ark. And they parked it in Obed Eden's house. And all while that ark was there, Obed Eden's house was blessed. And King David got jealous. So, ooh, that man's house being blessed. Let's go and get the ark and do it right. Put it on the poles and put it on our shoulders and things like that. Okay, that's another story there. But see, here it says in my book, my footnotes, Daniel purposed not to eat the king's food, which was forbidden to Jews. Such separation is twofold. It is towards the Lord and away from things that defile. Gentiles, and many of you, do things that really are de considered a, a defilement to the same Hebrews whom, in whom you study in the scriptures and you, you, you take on some of the laws of the Old Testament and throw out some of the other stuff, but some of the things we do in our churches is a defilement to the Jews in whom you study. And, okay, I'm getting in trouble. Uh, what he's saying here, Barbara Taylor says, amen, I love this story, particularly because I'm an administrative, to, administrative by trade. It's a gift from God, and I have extensive training and development in multiple areas of admin, administration. Barbara Taylor, if I had some tea right here, i tip my tea and drink it in your name. That is amazing, and I love that. Daniel chose to eat uh, the food grown out of the ground instead of the food that was offered to the pagan gods, lowercase case G. Abronia Scott says here, good teaching. Abronia, uh, y'all pay attention. She might be acting crazy on Facebook, but you sit with her, you actually will learn something with her crazy self. Uh, let's see, the occult forces, let's see, verse 20 in my footnote says, the occult forces were no match for the spirit of God. Modern cultic movements are merging many of these spiritual counterfeits into a contemporary revival of occultism. Man, 
Their influence will continue to rise as a final showdown between Jesus Christ and Satan nears. In all matters of wisdom and understanding, believers who seek to walk in the full life of the Holy Spirit will find, as did the Hebrews, that they are ten times better than those who pursue such traditions. Wow. Verse 21, this verse summarizes more than 60 years in the first year. Okay, I, 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 see, I didn't know that. There it is, okay? So notice the end part of the footnote. It says, uh, the, uh, as they that are 10 times better than those who pursue such practices. You come across as being arrogant in many cases. The world looks at you. And they think again that you're crazy because you do what you do. As a matter of fact, you worship it on the Sunday is considered a heresy uh, because they uh, bring up Constantine, emperor, and you have removed the Sabbath of Saturday. And I get a lot of that. I agree with the history that this, uh, many of us in Pentecostalism, not it didn't start with the Pentecostal, of course, it just, the Catholicism and Lutheran and what have you. Um, have grabbed the home to Sunday worship. I get it. And we did, we are uh, divided. I talk to my, my Jewish friends and sometimes we, we are divided as it pertains to worship. I believe that um, the worship is the time that you have with your God. That's between you and your God. And any day it could be your Sabbath with the Lord, even with the, as it pertains to food. And even though many Gentiles believe that the dietary practices of Leviticus was the law and what have you, I still believe that many of it should be practiced for health reasons, not because of law reasons. Uh, uh, I'm getting in trouble here. Again, we are unhealthy people in many cases because we figured because the Apostle Paul has given us a way out that we can go ahead and be eat whatever. Don't be judging folk and, and meat and drink and Sabbath day worship and, and holy days. Okay, he says don't don't be beating up folk for doing that. Okay, and, you know, give them freedom in the Lord. All right, but what some of us have done is we have taken that and become unhealthy because still pork is not healthy. Still catfish is not healthy. It's still. So it's not like God cleaned up these animals and allowed the New Testament to come on the scene so we can do whatever we want. It's still not healthy. So, But we try to test God and tempt God <laughs> with things. And it's just like saying, I'm going to eat this poison because God says if I eat a poison, anything poison, it will not hurt me. You see what I'm saying? So you shouldn't be tempting and testing God because what the scripture says when it comes to that. Tempt God with your obedience. <laughs> I dare you to tempt God with your test him with your obedience and then see if that works. All right. But don't tempt him with the, the laws of dietary. All right. Okay. I know I'm getting in trouble with that, but there are things that the Hebrews still practice today. I, I agree with it. I'm not gonna beat you up because you don't do it. But many of it I do I do agree with it and in my private uh worship time. I do it. I take communion at home. I have a, I have a, uh, a little. You can go to the store and get this beautiful uh, little thing with the, with the, with the uh, cups in it and the crackers and what have you. And there are little scriptures in it, and you can have private communion with you and yourself or your family. It's a great thing to do when you having your communion with the Lord. I believe that we have to eat right. Amen. And Sherry Tutson is around people. Who, she's around, well, she works in the hospital, so you know she's around a lot of unhealthy folk, and they're in there for reasons that I might have mentioned here, okay? So, the life of Daniel and these three men is a life that we should pay close attention to, and Elder Rodney Jones brought up something very important about the Daniel fast. He's going to have to go into detail with that, because I'm already in enough trouble here. Uh, you're teaching good. Uh, thank you, Robert Taylor. Oh, I can't wait to get Robert Taylor on the show, because that woman right there it's full of truth and wisdom. And I look, I like what, what Barbara said about the administrative work because this, this administration, the, the, the work that she does on her job, that the, the important thing here is that the usher at the church is probably one of the most important people, other than, of course, 
the, the, the pastor of that church or whoever, the leader of that church. The usher is, I would almost go as important as, as well, I'm not going to almost. She is just as important because she or he is the first person you see when you walk in there. And he or she, depending on what they say and what they look like, could cause you to have uh, issues when you walk in there. The usher. Well, Barbara, the administrator, is like that. Because she's the go-between. I hear music in my ear. I got to stop this show. I'm going to keep this rolling and let Elder Rodney Jones uh, chime on in. All right? I want to thank, um, let me see, bring Rodney in and see if that'll work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank like Major Elder, but just, you are. Uh, D. Curtis Randall for the D. Curtis Randall Morning Show. Uh, he is the man who's spinning the wax. And I want to thank uh, Urban Broadcast Media for your giving us the ability to do what we do here. All right? Love you, Dr. Finney. Let's uh, see you again next week, Wednesday, on So Off the Jump Show. Elder yes, Jones. sir. Yes. How you is, Reverend? All right, for a home, your brother. All right, man. All right. We see we are working this out here, um, and um, I'm glad you were able to come on in yes, here. Sir. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to do uh, three things at one time. Oh, but, you uh, can do it. Look George at technology. Jones, you can do it. You can do four things. <laughs> technology is the bomb we're able to do stuff like this leave one show and continue on the other it help us out with this uh, mm -hmm. what is, uh, bring out some of the parts of uh, this lesson that you think needs to be discussed well one of the things I would like to say is I think this whole lesson is centered around the heart and the purpose of Daniel Daniel and his heart is the whole thing of this whole entire lesson because Daniel purpose in his heart and because Daniel purpose in his heart then God brought favor on Daniel's behalf to the chief of the eunuchs and because of Daniel purpose in his heart Daniel did not have to eat the king's meat or drink the king's wine yeah. because Daniel's heart then God allowed Daniel to have a special relationship and a special pool with the king. And with his whole tenure, he was there so long until he was there, until that kingdom got captured, so on and so forth. Which is one of That's the right. reasons why we got this misunderstanding, I believe, of this Daniel's fast. And I think, now this is where Daniel fast come from. But uh, we, right. we're looking at it the wrong way. And we think that we can just go ahead and just uh, eat, uh, you know, the word. What Daniel wanted was pulse, right? And the right. word pulse means anything that was sown in the ground. Which yes, means sir. vegetables, it could be beans, it could be fruit, it could be bread or whatever. Anything that's sown in the ground is what pulse is. But Daniel had a specific reason why he went on this. Now, we call it a Daniel fast. Daniel never called it a fast. No, he didn't. Daniel never said, hey, I want to go on the fast. <laughs> so how did we get the term fast from? Yes, right. it is a denial, but it's not really a denial. It's not that Daniel didn't right. agree with the food. Daniel said something that was very important. He said he didn't want to defile himself. And that word defile, right there is the key thing, because the word defile is his religious upbringing, which means right. if he eat, because the Jews had a dietary law, which means right. if Daniel eat this particular thing that this pagan king has, Daniel would become ceremonially unclean, which means he would right. not be able to worship God. And they have the saying, when in Rome, yeah, don't, don't do Romans. what the Romans do, is what Daniel said. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what That's Daniel good. said, because Daniel is now That's in what Rome. he said, yeah. But Daniel did yeah. not want to do what the Romans did. Daniel wanted to do what the Jews did while living in Rome. That's a message to us, that regardless of where we are yeah. and wherever we are, even though we're in Rome, we're still supposed to live like a Jew. Because sure. Daniel purposed in his heart that he didn't want it. Now, we know, number one, it's a dietary law. So, number one, had Daniel eaten it, 
it was it was uh, made ready by Gentiles anyhow. So it would have been unclean. Mm -hmm. And then number right. two, because they drank, you know, they call it a little something for the fellows. That's how the Jews, that's how the, the, the pagans did it. They would pour out a little wine in honor of their gods. And they would literally say it. The Jews are the same way. They ate food in honor of their God. Everybody does right. it elsewhere as well. And then the Gentiles, they will sometimes take and strangle their food, strangle it and eat it, sometimes with the blood still in it. And that was against the, God, the law of God as well. Right. So there was at least three things that was against Daniel doing that. So it was him and the three brothers. The rest of those guys went on ahead and did it. But because Daniel purpose in his heart that he did not want to defile himself. Number one, God honored the heart of David, uh, of, of Daniel, and then because of the respect and the honor that Daniel had for where he was. Remember, Daniel was in captivity. And he could have, by law, went on ahead and did it, but his heart didn't want to defile right. himself. And so God worked everything yeah. out for the heart of Daniel because of that. Because, you know, when you get taken from there, they strip you of your name, your homeland, your diet, your language, your religious practice. They strip you of your traditions, your manners, your custom, your clothing. They strip you of everything. And when they do that, and we'll be honest with you, uh, Sir Walter, when they change your diet, they get control of you. They That's can true. change who you are because of your diet. Right now, we right. have people sick, right? because of eating right. other people's food. And now you're in the hospital taking drugs that you don't know what the drugs is calling you to do right now. That's true. So if Daniel had taken their food, he would have been subject to them and whatever they place in the food. It's so much stuff in this lesson, you know. It is. Huh? But you're right, because that's what they did to the slaves. Yes. They, they took all that from them. Look, look at what Get parents do names. to their babies. They put a little night quill yeah. in their food to make them sleepy. You get what she I'm did. saying? So it, it, it's, it's so much in this, but because Daniel purposed in his heart and the word uh, defile, he didn't want to pollute. He didn't want to stain. He didn't want to become impure. impure. He, so it's, it's really on because of the nature of what was going on in Daniel's life. When we go on what we call a Daniel fast, we watch TV, we play with the boys, we watch uh, 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 Empire. Come on. How are you going to be fasting and watching Empire? You got to watch your eye gate, your ear gate, your mouth gate, your nose gate, your mind. All of that's got to be fasting at the same time. So this stuff that we call a, a Daniel's fast, we playing games. It, it's not a Daniel's fast. You just, you just ain't eating meat. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Call it yeah, it right, right. Now, a fast... Any fast is really good. But don't think right. you're going to get the same result of Daniel because you're not really right. doing it for the same reason that Daniel did. See, Daniel didn't want to, he point. didn't want to insult himself because Daniel wanted to worship God. Do I have a witness? Yeah. <laughs> They're typing in the witness, right, brother. Come on, somebody. Um, I like Barbara Taylor, Sherry too. Sherry says, uh, you can't eat from everybody's table. <laughs> huh? But spiritually and naturally, you can't eat from everybody. No, you table. can't. Barbara says, yeah. You can't. And it, it, yeah, it, it's a... so much in just eating alone. And I believe this, too, yeah. that as uh, uh, people of God, we can't eat everything. You right. know, we have, we have, because our bodies is a temple of the Holy Ghost. We, our bodies is the temple of God. So we, certain medicines, I believe that the righteous should not take because it places, it takes us out of our mind. And anything that takes you out of your mind, you uh, be sober. That's true. Answer, uh, Pastor Tyrone Gasson says, so there's no such thing as a Daniel fast? Technically, no. Number one, Daniel never called it a fast. We call uh -huh. it that. We called it that. We call it that, and by popular demand, and then everybody takes it, but we don't really search the matter out. Daniel didn't go on a fast. Daniel didn't want to eat the king's food for dietary reasons and so that he won't defile himself. That's not a fast. So he was not no. breaking down the body 
because fasting is when you break down the body to get closer to God. But Daniel didn't want to hold off from eating meat. Daniel didn't want to eat pagan food because Daniel mm. did not want to subject himself to mess. And he wanted to remain what he was, and that was a Jew, a Hebrew, and he wanted to live his life in honor and respect to his religious beliefs and his honesty to his God. And from his heart, he asked God to do it from his heart. And God made provisions for that man to live like a Jew right there in a non-Jew's land, even though he was a slave. And the king could have had his neck cut off. Yeah, I Oh, that's true. Um, we got a saying, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Right. Okay? But the scripture call it the Lord's no, Prayer. No, it doesn't. Because the Lord's Prayer is actually John 17, when the Lord prayed. So what we call the Lord's Prayer is actually the disciples' prayer. Because they said, Lord, Master, or whatever, that's teach right. us how to pray. And he gave them right. how so to this pray. Is, and that's my point. Mm -hmm. We decided to call to systemize something. Correct. That doesn't mean that we're incorrect, nor does it mean that we're correct. Mm -hmm. We just it's just a better way of call for instance, the word, the phrase fivefold ministry is not in scripture. Right. But but we understand the concept of the five in Ephesians chapter four. Do we? So we we well, right. Yeah, a lot of us don't. Yeah, we re but we, we really call don't. It the five folds. Look at, look at, look at, look at the the seven men that were filled with the Holy Ghost that that the the, the apostles had selected. We call them deacons. Right, the six. Right, we call them deacons, but the Bible never called them deacons. Yet, never called them. Yet deacons. later, the deacons come on the scene with similar, yeah, uh, yeah, similar, but those were two different. Right. But for some reason, we always yep. take somebody else's word. And that's the reason yes. I'm thankful for your Theology Thursday, because you take the time to break some stuff down and challenge the minds of people. I've decided that I'm going to yep. just reread the scriptures with an open mind and ask the Holy Spirit to guide me, because a lot of what we've been saying just ain't here. And look at the fivefold ministry. We call them offices, the office of bishop, the office of pastor. The Bible never called it office. It said gift. No. Matter of fact, the gifts. You, do you know what that means? Right. You can have 20 pastors in your church. They have the gift of pastor, but that don't mean that they have the office yep. of pastor. And so we think I'm the only pastor here. Exactly. No, you ain't. Because everybody, according to Ephesians, everybody has been given the gift or some type of gift. Now, there's three main yep. groups of gifts. God gives gifts in Romans. The Holy Spirit gives gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. And then Jesus gave gifts in uh -huh. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. All give gifts. Every member of the body of Christ has a gift. But we need to know what it is. And the purpose of the fivefold or the fourfold is to perfect the giftings of the saints so that the saints can work the ministry. We got the fivefold or fourfold trying to do everything, and that's why the church is not effective at all. And we need to really look at this. That's right. This whole. And huh? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Y'all forgive the going in and out. That might it might be on his end or it might be on my end. I don't know. Um, but Elder Dennis Griffin says. So is this why so many Christians? Compromise, he says, of falling for anything and not standing up. Well, yes. Well, number one, many of our Christians are lazy. They don't read. They don't study, I think, because we spend a lot of time watching TV um, or at work or at lunch yeah. or at dinner. So many of our saints don't take this time. It's hard to find a saint that would take one hour to study a day, just one hour to just flat out read the scriptures. Wait. Huh? Yeah, there are many who told me that the only time that they will hear the word of God or study it is Thursdays between five and six o'clock when the Sir Walter Jones shows up. Exactly. So and that's it. It's important to them. 
Yes, yeah, and I yes, yeah. Doctor Dr. 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 Darryl, there is Gardner. a difference, and we'll leave that to Elder Walter. There is a difference in gifts and talents. And Sister Barbara Taylor, yes, I'm. I, that's a yeah. very powerful, and I love what she says. I'm going to do that. Reread scriptures and ask the Holy Ghost to reveal them to me. That's because the Holy Ghost is the author. Why not ask the author what is the meaning of the scriptures that he wrote or, or that he offered? Uh, and we got the best one yeah. because he's the one that authored it. And yes, I agree with Elder, Elder Dennis that number one, every, every saint should have their own walk. Everybody should be a Daniel. And I don't know if you said it earlier, but, but the Bible called them children. They were teenagers. Daniel right. was a teenager, probably 16, they 17, were. 18, or something like that. You mean at 17 or 16 years old, he purposed in his heart not to defile himself? At 17, Josiah was right. nine years old, or eight years old when he became the king. And the Bible said he set his heart to be right with God. And when God got ready to destroy some things, he, sure he told Josiah, he said, because you set your heart to be right with me, I'm not going to let you see this. And so if for some reason we... We skim over or we listen to um, someone else give us what the Bible means and we never research it or read it out. So I believe that we have allowed people to tell us that this is a Daniel fast, but they never really tell us really what a Daniel fast is. And scripture never called it a fast. No, no, it doesn't. And, and, and it's not to discourage folk from uh, right. uh, doing this type of fast. Correct. Because any fast call is good. Call it what it is. <laughs> Just call it what it is. Yeah, any fast is good uh, for the purpose that you fast, of course. But to answer the doctor, um, um, the First Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14 talks about gifts mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not one of them mentioned music. <laughs> <laughs> right? You mean music ministry is not a gift? But every time... You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... Every time we talked about a musician, we always say he's gifted. He has a gift. Mm -hmm. But we don't see where gift of the Holy Spirit, and it's mentioned, most of them, but not all of them are mentioned between those three chapters. Music uh -huh. is not part of it because music is a talent. But, but the music, when played, activates uh -huh. a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, because the... Uh, the apostle, not the apostle, uh, Elisha was called to prophesy. Right. But he wouldn't do it unless a minstrel. Unless the minstrel began to play. And notice he didn't say unless the organist. Because there's was something the guitarist, about. But it said the minstrel. No, he didn't. <laughs> and there's a difference yeah. between a minstrel. A minstrel <laughs> is someone who's in touch with the spirit. The minstrel is in touch with the spirit. Yeah. The person that's ministering or preaching the gospel message should be in touch with the spirit as well. And both should be moving at the same time as the minister is ministering. Right. The minstrel is ministering as well, but they're both under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and everything should be working together. Matter yeah. of fact, I shouldn't even have to tell the minstrel exactly. what to play, nor when to play, nor what key. Because we're both being led by the Holy Spirit, and 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 it, it should kick in simultaneously as one. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, the the music is activated from he or she who which is anointed, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. which causes the change. Uh, Saul had an evil spirit from the Lord. Yes. David played his heart. Mm -hmm. Now, David's music ability wasn't his gift. It was his talent, but David was anointed. Yes, he was. So because the anointing, and so whatever the, whatever the anointed does, mm -hmm. things happen. Yes, sir. It elevates. The anointing you know comes to do something. Yes. Absolutely. So the obedience of something can activate and not so much the uh, the element. For instance, David, um, um, Samson's hair, the debate was, 
was it to strengthen his hair or was to strengthen his obedience to not cut the hair? <laughs> uh huh. Okay, there's always that issue there. The issue with the point, the issue with the oil as well. Is the uh, is the the blessed oil? Does it have some miraculous power, or is it in the person who's using the oil? Right. Right. You see, there's always this debate here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and so and, and, we do. We use that with people who are who are musically gifted. Uh huh. So, so see, the gift Go is ahead. in the individual, but the anointing is in the individual as well. Now, there is a difference between being gifted yeah. and anointed, because I believe that the anointing yep. really can be gone, but the person is playing for, from their gift, or they're doing whatever they're doing. Because they yep. have been gifted to do it. However, the anointing will arise in an individual for a specific thing, which will also heighten their um, uh, their gifting to a, another level that it would not be able to do it if they were not anointed to play. So you could be anointed. For instance, I can have the gift. Preaching is a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I should yes. say preaching is a calling. Pastoring sure. is a gift and not per se That's the gift. an offer. Huh? Right. Yeah. Right. You're right. Pastoring is the gift. Pastoring is the gift. Preaching is a calling. Yes. Whosoever shall call upon the True. name of the Lord shall be saved. How can they call on him whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can they, they, they preach except they be sent? So preaching is a calling. Right. Pastoring is a gift. But for some reason, mm -hmm. we take one gift and put it above another. There are no gift that's above the other. They all are right. for one common goal. Yeah, yeah. I, I started yes, saying five. Well, we call it fivefold. The in the Greek is fourfold, because in the Greek, sure, pastor and teacher is one. Pastor teacher together. You know, but it's really that's true. And I think it's two. Like I always said, I think it's in two areas. You got the global which is the mm -hmm. apostle, the prophet, and the evangelist. And then you got the local, which is the pastor and the teacher. I believe he made that yes. in two sections. But it's all for yes. one common goal. That's to perfect the saints so that the saints can work the ministry. So I believe that I can be operating in my gift and be effective. However, I believe that the anointing will come for a specific reason and it will heighten the gift that I already have and make it for whatever the case yep. may be. Because there have been times when I just felt good yep. and I felt like teaching, but there's been times when I knew without a shadow of a doubt that the anointing was upon me with signs and wonders and demonstrations and powers of the Holy Ghost or whatever. In other words, when God shows up with his anointing, he shows up for a reason. <sighs> That's it. I agree with that. Uh -huh. um, tonight, when you and I was just were talking about this, uh, we didn't discuss the lesson at all. Right. I, I didn't touch the lesson. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know nothing about the lesson until the time for me to leave the house to come here. And I looked, opened the book, and I saw the title. I says, now, okay, what am I going to do with this? I haven't studied the lesson. Right. So when 5 o'clock got here or whatever time we started, as soon as, soon as the cameras were rolling, mm -hmm. I had to realize the Lord has given you a gift. Exactly. Now, You're a teacher, you which You're teacher do you operate in? You operate in the gift of teaching or what? Teaching, yes. So you operate yes. in the gift of teaching, which means it is your job to take a passage of scripture and break it down to the smallest molecule. And you really right. don't even have to really take a whole lot of time to study it because you got the gift. And when you got a gift, right. it don't take a whole lot of practice and praying and fasting when one has the gift. That's the purpose of the gift. True. That's why it, it's natural because you've been gifted to do it. And so you right. should be able to take just one small scripture, if, the word if, and break it down True. to the smallest molecule where your great, 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 great grandson's pet should be able to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. 
That's true. Um, Rob says Saul had, had uh, been demoted. The kingship and the anointing had been lifted from him, yet he remained in the office with no anointing. Robert's saying. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah Broner, you helped me a little. Yeah. Now, now, now that's yeah. cool. That's interesting. Now watch because, this, though. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, Go ahead. ahead. No, no, you first. Well, Saul, like you said, was, um, uh, uh, he, he, he was appointed and anointed. Saul's anointing left. Saul was still appointed. David was anointed, but not appointed. So since David was anointed, he can kill his thousands because he was anointed. While Saul was only now appointed because God removed his anointing. So he was only able to kill his thousands. So you can be effective That's with true. your gift, but when your anointing come, it really heightens the gift that you have. So you can be appointed like Saul and kill your thousand, and you can be anointed like David and kill your ten thousands. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. See, that's good. Um, King David thought that Saul was still anointed because even after he died, mm -hmm. David told the armor bearer mm -hmm. who killed him or who claimed to have killed him, mm -hmm. how dare you kill God's anointed? <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Because David, David re still respected this man, but he probably didn't know. I don't know if God had removed it. Right. Right. But God did remove it. Right. Respect is key from thing. him because God Respect. revealed to the yeah because God revealed to the prophet mm -hmm. that is what's going to be removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Respect is the key thing. Um, respect yeah. is the key thing because even in yeah. this lesson with Daniel, Daniel had respect. He even had God on his side, his side, and he didn't want to defile himself. But Dave, uh, Daniel he still asked the prince of the eunuchs if he can not have this particular dietary law from the king. That's respect, which means your gifting can be greater than your brother, but your brother is operating their gifting at that moment. Have respect and respect the gifting of your brother who's operating at that time. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's... Uh... That's, that would be Samuel 16 and 14. Uh -huh. I don't know if you could read that. Uh, the, spirit, the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. Yes. <laughs> let me, oh, let me read. Let me, this, is, this is the after show. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's what that's. The Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. Um, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Yes. Okay. And I think from someone Lord, asked that question, uh, Dr. Dr. Riddle, he asked that question. Yeah. Yep, Riddle did yeah. ask that. Because yeah. he, uh, um, and it's a very good question. Now, it didn't say. Great question. It didn't say God sent it. It said it came from the presence of the Lord. I'm getting ready to go there. Yes. Scripture is very plain. <laughs> Scripture is awesome. Scripture yeah, especially never said. when you're trying to interpret. Right. Yeah, scripture is yeah. very, very clear. Especially when you're trying to interpret King James. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. You get in trouble trying to interpret King James sometimes. Yeah. So it it yeah. it came from the presence of the Lord. Just like that other spirit who God says, how are we going to deal with this? And this other spirit said, I'll become a lying prophet. Or I'll become a, uh, mm -hmm. a false or uh, a lying spirit or something like that. You remember that? So if everything moves by God, by permission of God. So even when the sons of men, Satan came also, when he left from the presence of God, I'm sure he went and did evil, but that doesn't mean he got God's permission because he left from the presence of God. So that spirit left from the presence yes. of God, but it doesn't mean that God sent it. <laughs> right. Um, Satan had always wanted to torment Saul. Yes. Uh, so we have to we have to reference the uh, the story of Job 
because God had a shield around him. Yes. Job. Mm -hmm. so, so Satan tried to attack him, but Satan told God, I can't mm -hmm. because you've got this force around Correct. you. Correct. Okay. So uh, once the force or protection or hedge was removed from Job, mm -hmm. then scripture could rightfully say, an evil spirit from the Lord attacked Job as well. Yeah, exactly. Now, me and you agree yeah. to this because the devil does God's bidding. Yes. And many people don't yes. believe it. Yes. So when you look at Job, the first or the second chapter, God said to the devil, even though you moved me against him without cause. So I know uh -huh. we said God that the de that the devil did it, but God did it because God initiated the conversation. God said, "Have you considered my servant Job?" Yeah. God removed his, his hand yes. of protection from Job, and God allowed the, the the devil to do what he did to test Job. Now God didn't do it; He permitted yes, sir. Sir, Satan to do it, and Satan is so ignorant that he plays along. The, he does God's bidding. So whenever God needs to punish somebody, God uses the devil to punish people. The devil probably thinking, oh, man, I got it. That's good. No, dummy, I'm using you. Look what I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm and using you. you. <laughs> I'm using you. So God is yeah, an accessory. To that. He's an accessory to it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because the only power he has that. is from because God. Because if, if that's it. So we use two terms, permissive will and perfect will. Right. Exactly. You know, we use it a lot. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And there is a exactly. reason. But, but, and they both are wills from the Lord, but they, they mm -hmm. both have a purpose. God still did both of them, whether it was perfect or whether it was allowed. Still got exactly. his hand in it because he could have stopped it. Exactly. So he's still look at the in the court of, yes. Uh -huh. look, 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 look at the Sunday school lesson. In the first chapter of Daniel, the Bible said that Jehoiakim lost the battle and he was given into right. the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. God did. That's right. So earlier, That's what God I said told earlier. them, I'm going to send you to Nebuchadnezzar and he's going to capture you all and you better not try to escape. Now, yeah. I'm sure Israel was crying and saying, God, the devil this and the devil that. You just called God the devil because God is now punishing you for what you're doing. And and I feel, Dr. Right. Phil, Phil Alcid, yes. that brother taught me a lesson many years ago. When I posted on it and I he said the devil did this. this, he inboxed me and said, how do you know it was the devil? You probably just yeah. called God the devil. And from that moment, I'm very wow. careful of what I call the devil. Because sometimes I'm yes, reaching sir. what I sow. Sometimes God is testing me. And sometimes the devil is working uh, against me. And I need That's to it. know when is God, when is the devil, or when is myself. <laughs> See, and what you just did was brought up eschatology. Because when you read the book of Revelation, we look at a, the, the catastrophes that are happening but many Christians don't realize that God himself mm -hmm. is pushing buttons That's right. for these things to happen, even to the point of allowing Satan to come down from heaven and to call. God is doing that himself. Yes, sir. He's playing cards. <laughs> right. Okay. Exactly. And he says, okay, he, he's meddling. That's what God is doing. He's meddling, mm -hmm. but he's meddling because the prophecies must come forward. They, they have to. Look, look at right now. Yeah. We got a devil as the king, a president. I mean, we have a man that's the president <laughs> of the United States of America. I believe. Okay, that's much better. He, I believe he was placed there by God. And he going to tear know this country he up. Because this country know he has was. turned her back against God. And God has to punish yes, this sir. country by placing that man as the president of the United States of America. And you know what? Regardless of how much we hate him, we got to respect him because he's here because of God, because of what we did. Today's lesson, uh, Nebuchadnezzar became the king over Judah 
and God allowed him to take the stuff, the vessels out of the house of God and put it into the house of his false God. God allowed that to happen as punishment. So we better take it like a man. <laughs> but see, that's a good point. Because even though God is responsible for the president, what the white evangelicals think is that God put him there to save and they made him a holy president. They made him a perfect president, but they got, they're like the Jews in Romans 9 and 10. They are, uh, they have cataracts, meaning they, what Blindness. the Bible call them says that they are Blindness. Blind in part. Right. Yes. They're blind in part. The, the, white, the white evangelicals have hailed him as this person, as, as a King David in a sense, but really uh, Trump is a King Saul. So That's they're blind it. in part, thinking that God sent That's him right. here for one reason, but he's, he's actually here for another reason. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's, my, right. I, That's what I believe. Because God knew I believe who too. was going to be the president. Uh, mm -hmm. Years ago, he, he knew that Donald Trump would be the man. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart because America has passed ungodly laws. America has entered into defilement. The church has somewhat entered into defilement. In this lesson, this is a very important lesson because the 501c3, I'm going to go there. The 501c3 was invented by oh, the man. president of the United States to shut the mouth of the church. The church always fought yes, against sir. the government. The church was always a sore thorn right. to the government. The government, by way of president, says, how can we shut this church up? And somebody says, let's invent something to shut their mouth. They invented the 501c3. And, the, and history says over 90-some percent of all pastors shut their mouth up. So now we have been breastfed by the nipple of the 501c3. But we need to be just like Daniel was, who purposed in his heart that he will not defile the Lord God with this 501c3. Because when we get that, we have now been connected back to the world, back to the king. And the king can tell the church what to do. And right now, the Bible said, while men slept, the enemy slept or uh, crept in on the wares and so uh, tears among the righteous, or among the saints, or among the wheat. And this is where we are right now. We depend on tithe. We depend on offering. We depend on the 501c3. But we don't depend on the Holy Ghost to keep us open to keep us operating, to keep us moving, to keep us fasting, to keep us praying. We don't depend on the Holy Ghost to teach us how to live in this Gentile world, but live like Jews and holy people. This is where we are. This lesson right here, hit it. This one right here. This one right here is one of the greatest lessons in, in kingdom. Yes, in sir. Kingdom right here. Um, the five, I, I did a show on the 501c3. And when I when you read what the 501c3, do you not realize it says that the ones who have this uh, 501c3 is a ward of the state? Yeah, you are a ward of the government. That's right. That means once you up under the blanket, the umbrella of the 501, then that church that you build and said it's God's house mm -hmm. uh, is not anymore. Nope. In the eyes of the state. It's Nebuchadnezzar's That's our house. Church. That's right. That's our church because you belong to us. You are a ward now That's right. of us. <laughs> yep. And, and, and we restrict. And they have to do what the government tell them to do. This is where right. we are right now. Now, a lot of people don't know the fullness of the 501c3. And they think it's, it's fine. What was wrong with the first setup that we had? We didn't always have the 501c3. But the church was all We didn't ruled. need it. Huh? That's right. The church was always ruled by itself. And God always wanted the yes, church sir. to be separated from the world. Now we've compromised our religious holidays. We got right. Jesus being born in the wintertime when most likely he was born in the spring. 
And instead of us worshiping God for the birth of Jesus, we got the saints talking about Santa Claus. We got a song Elvis sang the other day. I thank the Lord above because Santa Claus is coming to town. How do you get them two people together? This is where we are, and, and we, we, we messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah we have we have pulled ourselves out of the god rule yeah and we've become we've become a, a republic or a democracy correct um yeah uh, let me wrap this up man and get out of here yes sir uh, they want us to leave leave the house they uh masters kicking negroes out the house now um, but man, you got You got any? <laughs> you got any parting thoughts? Give me one minute or two minutes of a parting thought about this lesson. Practical. Uh, this lesson. How, we, how can you apply it to our lives today? This lesson lets us know that regardless of where we go, we are supposed to represent God from our heart, our actions, our lifestyle our dietary laws, how we honor one another, uh, even when we're confronted with things and people that we don't like. Uh, in this lesson, Daniel exemplified a one that walked holy. He exemplified someone who was honest. He exemplified somebody who did not want to do wrong about God because he didn't want to defile himself. He wanted to be a true worshiper. Even when he was in Rome, he wanted to live like a Hebrew and God granted him that privilege, and God gave him favor. Only God can give you favor with God, with man, and with everything else. And so I say with that in mind, wherever you are, reread your Bible for yourself. Don't add no words. Read the scriptures, every word. And I'm here at the music class studio in Indiana, laying down my Sunday school lesson, which I pray it will be uploaded sometime tonight. Today, this year, I want to do something different. So this is day one. I've joined efforts with the music master's class, Brother Larry Jones. I'm out here in Indiana, just laid it down, and we're going to get this cracker lacking. And y'all, y'all stay up. Y'all be peace. I'm loving it, Sir Walter Jones. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving you, man. Thank you for your teaching. And thank you, everybody who joined in. Go ahead, hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and let the world see and know what this lesson is all about. It's not just for Sunday school this Sunday, but let it be about your, your life forever until Christ comes and return and take us home. All right. Love you guys. Blessings to you. Peace. And peace. <laughs>